Now, more than one dozen families displaced by a fast-moving fire in Patterson now have to find a new place to live. And it's been one year since the state took over the Patterson Police Department. Has community police relations improved? Well, to discuss those topics and more uh, is the Patterson Mayor, Andre Saya, who is joining us now. So good morning to you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks for being here. Good morning, Dan and Hazel. Long time no see. Exactly. Yeah, nice. See you in studio one day. We will, hopefully, very soon. Um, Mr. Mayor, let's begin with some serious stuff here. The Red Cross helping 45 people right displaced by this fire ripped through several multifamily buildings yesterday. It was a massive fire. Any update on this and the investigation? What may have caused it to begin with? Yeah, thankfully, I mean, we had two fires, one on Hamilton, one on East 18th. Unfortunately, one man was found deceased. There were four displaced in that fire. And then the second fire, 44 displaced a total of 14 families. But thankfully, Dan, no injuries. Good. Oh, that's so that good. was a concern of ours. I've been in constant communication with the fire chief, and it is an ongoing investigation. So we're not 100% sure what caused either of the fires. Okay, good. All right. Well, uh, let's switch gears and go back to one year ago. New Jersey's Attorney General, Matthew Platkin, took over the Patterson Police Department amid claims of police misconduct and excessive use of force. So. Can you talk about what strategies have been put in place since the state took over and what the impact has been? Well, with well the Hazel, police? you know I'm, I'm challenging the attorney general in court because he has yet to cite state statute that gives him the authority to take over any police department in the state of New Jersey. And we're going to have significant support to solidify our case because what we're saying is that Matt Platkin cannot make the law, break the law, or fake the law. And quite frankly, what he did was undemocratic, unlawful, and un-American. We don't take over police departments. There are a number of initiatives that he introduced that were already underway prior to the takeover. I'll, I'll give you a few examples. He has an Arrive Together program. We already had a grant that we secured called Connect and Protect, which would provide for a co-response between the police and a mental health clinician in the event that there's an emotionally disturbed person who needs assistance. Then there's also a program where it was called, it's called opt-in, and we have a program called Community Court, where we help low-level, nonviolent offenders get, get, they don't get clogged up in the criminal justice system. So we give, the, we provide them a path to gainful employment and a better life. Hey, Mr. Mayor, I hear what you're saying here, but there, there were the claims of police misconduct, there were the claims of excessive use of force, which is why there was that takeover. You may not agree with it, and, but what is being done to address those very claims? Actually, Dan, he never really cited one specific reason why he came in. And I believe in partnerships. He never picked up the phone and said, how can we collaborate on this? I'm a duly elected mayor twice. So you don't think there was police misconduct or abuse of power? We're, we're not denying that, but what about collaboration? The attorney general can't pick up the phone and say, hey, mayor, how can we work together to improve the relationship between the police and the public? Mayor, how you've been elected twice by large margins. Mm -hmm. People put their faith in you. Why don't we join forces mm -hmm. and tackle this problem together? But, but are you saying the state hasn't implemented anything new other than what you already had in place? I'm not denying that the officer in charge and I have been working well together. What mm -hmm. I'm saying is the way this all went about is being challenged in court. And quite frankly, Matt Placken has proven not to be a team player. All right, so keep us posted on that lawsuit then. Uh, I do want to talk about... We will. You. Maybe when I'm in studio. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a lot of talks about, and before I get to the, the, what's going on in Patterson in terms of baseball, there's a lot of talk politically about whether or not you would like to seek higher office. Let me just get you on the record here. Do you want to yeah, run for higher yeah. office, governor, senate? Dan, I would never deny that. I mean, it's one thing to have ambition. It's the other to have ability. So if you have the ability to match your ambition, you should never limit yourself. So stay tuned. Maybe when I'm in studio in June... I'll have that, or July, I'll have that, uh, I'll have oh. more information for you. All right. So you're not ruling out a run for governor? I wouldn't rule out anything as far as, like, what I feel like my ability okay. would be able to match the skill set with that specific office. Got okay, it. well, then you'll make the big announcement when you're live here in the studio. <laughs> well, you never know. I like you guys um, a lot. So. Before we let you go, uh, we know that there, you, you know, Patterson is now uh, home to a museum dedicated to the Negro Baseball Leagues. Uh, PIX11 was there for the grand opening last week. So I know that the museum is only open by appointment now, and, and eventually it's going to be completely open. Uh, I want you to talk about that, but also you have some big news involving yeah. Major League Baseball. So I want to take you back. In 2009, my wife and I went to Rickwood Field, which is in Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah. It is the home of the other Negro League 
baseball stadium that's still standing. Patterson has the second one. So we brought that back to life. But in 2011, we went to Kansas City, Missouri, to visit the Negro League Museum. And we said, look, when we get back, become mayor, let's get our own museum. Because not many people are going to go to Missouri. I don't right. know how many mm -hmm. people can go to Kansas City. But they can come here, Patterson, 20 minutes outside of Manhattan. They can come and see for themselves. We're telling the story of African-American legends who were denied the opportunity to play with their white counterparts right. in Major League Baseball. They played here in Patterson. They played at Hinchliffe Stadium. And they can learn all about it at our new museum. It tells the story. Okay, but, then, but what about this big announcement with Major League Baseball? Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> another goal. In addition to restoring this historic stadium and bringing a Negro League Baseball Museum to Patterson, we want a regular season Major League Baseball game to be played at Hinchliffe Stadium. Yes. They're at Rickwood Field. They're playing on June 20th, the Cardinals and the Giants. So I can confirm we've been talking with Major League executives. We expect a visit next month. So we feel like we're getting close. I think we're on second base. We're rounding second, <laughs> heading to third base. There you go. I knew you'd like that. And, and preferably, we get this regular season game. It'll be between the New York Yankees, you know, the other team in New York. Nah. And, of course, the uh. beloved New York Mets, who are on picks 11. Come right. on now. Let's That's show right. some right. to the Amazons. And That's amazing. Dondi. All right, well, and, bring it and, on Dana home. Hazel, I'll tell you this. Yeah, we've got to bring it home. Yeah, that's right. So what the two teams that called Hinchcliffe Stadium home, the Negro League teams, were the New York Black Yankees and the New York Cubans. So if you right. get this game, the Yankees could be the Black Yankees and the Mets could be the New York Cubans. I like that. Here. Hey, you got a lot of things to keep us posted on, right? So uh, <laughs> we'll sure. talk to you in June or July. Uh, Where? Keep us in the studio. Right here. Okay, you got okay. it. My, uh, my children have to be out of school. I drop right. my daughters off every day. That's good. Okay. Good dad. Good dad. Mr. Mayor, appreciate you always. Thank Thanks, you so guys. much. Bye,